All right, so here they give us a circle and they've given us the circle equation. And they say, write down the coordinates of the center of the circle. Now guys, that's very easy. You should know that this is the, this is the center of the circle, right? So you can easily see that the center will be, the X coordinate will be six and the Y coordinate will be negative two. That we just get from there, right? Calculate the coordinates of S. Now, guys, S is very easy. Uh, you take this line. It's the x-intercept of that line. So to find the x-intercept, you make y zero. And then you'd find that x is equal to two. OK, x is equal to two. All right, so that's pretty straightforward, hey? Um, so we've now found that P is six and negative two. S is two and zero. Question 4.3, determine the equation of the line BC for four marks. So BC is over here. Okay, I'm gonna carry on. So guys, um, the way that I saw this one is that I instantly noticed that this line is a diameter, which means that this angle here is 90 degrees. Why? Because the diameter uh, angles in a semicircle, they always make a 90 degree angle. So we can say that this line and this line are perpendicular to each other, which means that we can easily work out the gradient and all of that. But what Inga said, and I didn't even realize, is that, um, but wait, Inga, did they tell us that the lines are parallel? Hmm. You see, Inga, the only problem is, is that they didn't tell us that these lines are parallel. That's why it probably is parallel, but they wouldn't give you the marks because they didn't tell us it's parallel. Um, I hope that makes sense. Let me just make sure. Intercept, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you see, Inga, they didn't tell us it's 90. I mean, it's parallel, so we couldn't use that. But guys, this is 90 degrees. So we would have to say that in the exam, angle B is equal to uh, 90 degrees. Why? Because angles in a semicircle right? Because this is the diameter. They did tell us that. So that means that the gradient of AB, which is this one, multiplied by the gradient of BC must naturally be minus one. That's just what two 90 degree, uh, two perpendicular lines do. That's just the way it works. So if we know that the gradient of AB is two, so we can say two multiplied by the gradient of BC is equal to negative one. We would find out that the gradient of BC is equal to negative a half. So we can now say that the equation of BC is equal to negative a half X plus C. Then to find C, you need to plug in any point on that line, which on this line would be B. So we can then say two is equal to negative a half times three plus C. And then um, we can go ahead and solve for C. And so what we would find is that C is going to be equal to seven over two. C is equal to seven over two. Therefore, the equation um, of BC is gonna be Y equals to negative a half X plus seven over two. Okay, so now what it says is that Determine the equation of a circle with the center at point R and passing through point B and C. Okay, now I don't know about you, but I've always found it very difficult to draw the circle. It always looks ugly, okay? So what I'm gonna rather do, luckily I think I have a little circle over here. Oh, genius. Only problem is I can't drag this silly thing. There we go. There we go. Now these circles never come out nicely. Okay, guys, so I want you to do something for me. Whenever they say, um, determine the equation of the circle. Oh, no, no, that's a different type of question. Usually that's when they say, prove that, that's when they say, prove that the line is a tangent to the circle. I was thinking of something different. So, so determine the equation of uh, the circle with center R and passing through B and C. Okay, so this is quite an easy one because um, if we have B and we have R, oh no, we don't have R. Um, okay, we can get R, determine the equation of the circle with center R. Okay, so let's go find R. How are we going to do that? Well, this line is, um, this line is the equation 
of BC. This line is the equation of BC. So we can easily find the coordinates of R by finding the X intercept of that line. So we could say zero equals to negative a half, half X plus seven over two, and then X would equal to seven if you had to go and solve all of that. So the, the, the coordinates of R will be seven and zero. So we can already get most of our circle equation because we know that a circle equation goes x minus a plus y minus b. And so that would be x minus seven plus y minus zero equals to r squared. And then I'm just going to simplify. OK, and now we can easily use the distance formula. We can use the distance formula over here to work out what the radius of that circle would be. So um, we can use the distance formula, which is like this. Like that. And so that's going to give us um, 0 minus 2 plus 7 minus 3. And then I'm just going to type all of that in on the calculator. And that's going to give me 2 square root 5. So that means that the radius is equal to 2 square root 5. So what I can do is I can say x minus 7 plus y squared equals to 2 square root 5 squared. But now if you square 2 square root 5, it's actually going to give us a nice number of 20. It gives us 20. All right, let's move on, guys. Last question. Show that, okay, let's just quickly write down what we have so far. Um, we know that this is seven and zero. This one was y equals to negative a half x minus, no, plus seven over two. Um, and s we also found earlier as two and zero. Okay, so it says, last question of the evening, guys. Show that ac, where's ac? Here it is. Show that ac is parallel to sr. Okay. Now, the gradient of SR is zero, right? We can see that. Um, the gradient, oh, wrong pen. Don't need that. Need that one over there. Yeah, this gradient is zero. If you don't believe me, you can go do the gradient formula and you would get zero. So we can say that the gradient of SR is, uh, let's just quickly do it, zero minus zero over seven minus two, and that gives you zero. Okay, so if these two lines are parallel, AC and SR, then we can simply go and prove that this line also has a gradient of zero, because if they are parallel, then the gradients are, I mean, if the gradients are the same, then they are parallel. Okay, so what we can do is let's go calculate this coordinate first. Now, how could we calculate that coordinate? It's very easy. What we know is that there was a circle here earlier. Remember how we drew it over here? And we knew, we were told that this line over here was the diameter. So we could use the midpoint theorem in reverse. And we, could, we know that this is that. The center is 7 and 0. So you could easily work out the coordinates of C using the midpoint theorem in or the midpoint formula in reverse. So let's quickly go write out the midpoint formula. We know that the midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. So we know that the coordinates of the center are already, um, we know that the x coordinate is 7. So we can say x1 plus x2 over 2 should equal to 7. So the two x values will be 3 plus whatever this x value is at x, I mean at c. See what I'm doing, guys? I'm using the midpoint formula, but I already know what the midpoint is, but I don't know what this is. So the midpoint formula still works very nicely. If you had to go do that, you would find out that x is equal to 11. Now, for the y values, I know that the midpoint y value is 0. So I can say 0 is equal to y1 plus y2 over 2. And if we had to go work that out, you would find out that y2 is equal to 
negative two. And so y is equal to negative two. And so that will be the coordinates of C, minus two, I mean, 11 and minus two. You can do that in another way if you want, as long as you find out that the coordinates of C will be 11 and minus two. Right, now to find the coordinates of A, we need to think about that. That's gonna be quite interesting. To find the coordinates of A, we could see that it is the place where the straight line is intersecting um, this circle. It is the place where the straight line is intersecting this circle. So we could put the straight line inside the circle. We could put it inside the circle and we should get two answers. Why would we get two answers? We get two answers because that straight line is intersecting the circle over here and it's also intersecting the circle over here. So it would definitely cut twice. So we should expect one of our X answers to be a three. If it's not, we have done something wrong. It's not a coincidence. We have done something wrong. So guys, we're gonna go plug the straight line into the circles equation so that the way that that works is you go x minus six squared plus. Now in the place of y, you are gonna replace it with two x minus four. Okay, and then we can just go and simplify this a little bit. Okay, now I'm just gonna multiply out quickly. You guys know how to do this. Okay, and then I'm going to put all the like terms together. I'm also going to go through that fairly quickly. 5x squared minus 20x um, plus 15 equals to zero. I'm going to divide everything by five. I'm then factorizing x minus three. You can use the quadratic formula if you want, no problem. And x equals three or x equals one. And there we know that x equals to three is already this one over here. So that's fantastic. We know we've done this correct. And then x equals to one is obviously the one that we are looking for. So this x value is one. How do I find the y value? I plug the y value back into the circles equation or into the straight line. So I'm just gonna use the straight line equation. And so that would be y equals to two times one minus four, and so y is negative two. Then we've done all of that to go and do the gradient formula between these two now. And so the gradient between those two would be minus two minus minus two over one minus 11. And you would find that the gradient is equal to zero. And that is exactly what the gradient of SR was. It was also zero. So we can say, therefore, the gradient of AC is equal to the gradient of SR. Therefore, they must be parallel. So AC must be parallel to SR.